Ooh, baby, it's about to get freaky as we expose the dirty secrets of one of our favorite rappers, Drake. You know when the hotline blings that can only mean one thing. However, Drake isn't ready to share the full meaning of his actions, but I will. Not long ago, Drake was captured in a clip that was seen by the whole world. And let's just say he gave his fans a front row seat to a very private moment with another fan. Bro wasn't singing. Somehow this guy's ready to go on living despite the X-rated truth. But what really went down? Did Drake truly not know he was live when he did this? You be the judge. Drake kisses and fondles underage fan on stage. No doubt celebrities are constantly under the microscope. Every action scrutinized, every misstep a scandal. So it's not surprising to see Drake on the hot seat amid his beef with Kendrick Lamar. A video clip from May 2010 has emerged, casting a shadow over the glittering career of the Canadian rapper. The footage, taken during a live performance at the Ogden Theater in Denver, Colorado, captures a controversial interaction between the artist and a young fan, a mere 17-year-old girl. At the time, Drake was riding the crest of a wave, having just released his debut studio album, Thank Me Later, which skyrocketed to the top of the charts, cementing his status as a rising star in the hip-hop and R&B scene. The concert, part of a series that showcased Drake's burgeoning talent, was packed with enthusiastic fans, eager to witness the live performance of hits like Find Your Love and Over. The air was thick with anticipation, the crowd's energy palpable as Drake commanded the stage with his magnetic presence. Midway through the concert, the atmosphere took a turn toward the unexpected. In a moment that would later ripple through the media, Drake invited a young fan to join him on stage. She was a girl with a youthful glow, her excitement at sharing the spotlight with the artist evident in her wide-eyed wonder. The rapper, then 23 years old, welcomed her with a warm embrace, a gesture that seemed innocent enough in the realm of concert theatrics. As the music played, Drake began to dance with the girl, their movements in sync with the rhythm. The crowd cheered, caught up in the spectacle, as Drake's performance took on a more personal note. He then paused to compliment the girl, remarking on the scent of her shampoo, a comment that, while while seemingly friendly, added an intimate layer to their interaction. Within a moment, the scene escalated as Drake pulled the girl's shirt down at the back of her neck, leaning in to plant a kiss. The audience's reaction was a mix of cheers and murmurs, the dynamic between the star and the fan blurring lines that are often unspoken but understood. However, Drake's actions did not stop there. He reached around, his hands grazing across her chest, an act that shifted the tone from one of performance to one of personal indulgence. It was at this point that the microphone once again in Drake's hand became a confessional of sorts. He admitted to getting carried away. The cheers from the crowd responding to Drake's cheeky confession quickly turned into a collective gasp when Drake inquired about her age and she responded, 17. The revelation was met with a mix of shock and laughter from the crowd and Drake's reaction was immediate. I can't go to jail yet, man, he exclaimed. He knew the gravity of the situation. Despite the age of consent in Colorado being 17, the exchange between Drake and the fan was laden with controversy. He continued to engage with the girl, commenting on her appearance with words like thick and curvaceous Remarks that, while perhaps meant as compliments, carried an undertone that was hard to ignore. Drake, caught in the moment, seemed unable to pull himself from falling deeper into a bigger scandal, and his next words dug him deeper into trouble. While expressing a mix of guilt and enjoyment, the rapper remarked, I don't know if I should feel guilty or not, but I had fun. I like the way your breasts feel against my chest. As the interaction came to a close, Drake kissed the girl on her cheeks and forehead, a gesture that, in any other context, might have been seen as endearing. But in the aftermath of their previous contest, Contact, it felt like an attempt to diffuse the tension that had built up. The crowd was left to grapple with a mix of emotions, entertainment, and the reality of a boundary cross. As the house lights dimmed and the crowd dispersed into the night, the incident between Drake and the 17-year-old fan might have seemed like just another concert moment destined to fade into the annals of music tour history. However, the digital age has a long memory, and like they say, the internet never forgets. This clip of that night in Denver would emerge from obscurity to ignite a firestorm of public reaction. Once unearthed, it spread like wildfire across social media platforms, with viewers around the world watching the interaction with a mixture of disbelief and discomfort, while the court of public opinion convened. The reactions were a chaotic blend of condemnation, concern, and disappointment. Users were quick to draw parallels between Drake's onstage behavior and the chilling revelations from the Surviving R. Kelly series, which had just aired, exposing the dark underbelly of celebrity and the potential for abuse of power. The hashtag #HashDrakeIsOverParty began trending, serving as a digital gathering place for those expressing their outrage. Tweets ranged from calling the interaction predatory and uncomfortable to watch to outright disgust. I'm so disgusted by his response after she said her age. No respect, one tweet read, while another stated, he keeps getting away with this too. It's not the first time 
time he's been caught messing with underage girls. Many fans raised questions about the boundaries that should exist between stars and their often impressionable admirers. This was not just about Drake. It was about a culture that seemed all too willing to overlook questionable actions by those in positions of power and influence. The power dynamics at play were undeniable. Drake, a prominent figure with considerable influence, was seen engaging with a young fan in a manner that many perceived as taking advantage of his status. The ethical considerations of such an imbalance were at the forefront of the discussions. The responsibility of celebrities to maintain professional boundaries, especially with minors, became a topic of intense debate. Another angle that was explored by experts was the significant impact the scandal could have on Drake's career and public image. As a beloved figure in the music industry, known for his emotional depth and connection with fans. The incident threatened to tarnish his reputation. Fans and critics alike wondered if this would lead to a fall from grace for the artist, similar to other celebrities who have faced backlash for their conduct. However, in this case, the conversation around the incident was not just about legality. It was about the moral compass of the entertainment industry and those who are elevated to the status of role models. The question was not simply whether Drake had broken the law, but whether he had breached the trust of his fans and the public at large. As the the dust settled, the incident left a permanent mark on Drake's public image. While some fans remained loyal, others viewed him with a newfound suspicion. The rapper's U.S. publicist declined to comment, and Drake himself did not address the video on social media, leaving the public to draw their own conclusions. Ten years later, Drake was the name on everyone's lips. His past mistake had become history, and he was racking up hits and fandom until Kendrick Lamar happened. Kendrick Lamar brutally brought the saga back to the public's consciousness amidst his ongoing feud with Drake. The video resurfaced in May 2024, days after Kendrick Lamar released a diss track, Not Like Us, where he dubbed Drake a certified pedophile and savagely trolled the Canadian rapper on his alleged connection to younger women. This inevitably brought further scrutiny on Drake's public image as critics, and those who had previously not seen the video slammed the rapper for what they perceived as inappropriate behavior against a minor. However, at the peak of the Kendrick Lamar-triggered hate campaign against Drake, one of the most unexpected things happened that further escalated the situation. The underage girl at the center of the controversy, now identified as 31-year-old Tia Jayed, recently came out to set the record straight. Stepping into the spotlight to address the 14-year-old clip, Tia Jayed wasted no time in mounting a defense for Drake. While sharing some controversial headlines regarding the clip, she wrote, nothing then and it's nothing now. In a longer statement, she provided context, explaining that it was her father who had taken her to the show and that being selected to go on stage by an artist's entourage was a common practice. She insisted, I was 17 back then and I'm 31 now. This was a concert that my dad took me to back in high school. Drake's entourage actually picked me out from the crowd of people, not Drake himself. Jayad's statement proved her perception of the event as harmless, a sentiment that resonated with some fans who viewed the interaction as a typical concert experience. However, the court of public opinion is not easily swayed, and the resurfacing video reignited debates about celebrity conduct, especially concerning interactions with underage fans. Despite the alleged victim's statement, many called out Drake for lack of accountability, while while accusing him of brainwashing her. For critics, Jayad's statement only served to buttress Lamar's point about Drake being a pedophile. Some of them went as far as claiming that Drake must have paid Jayad to make the post in a bid to clear his name from all the negative criticism he had been receiving lately. At the forefront of the attacks on Drake is Kendrick Lamar, who has taken every opportunity to throw dirt on Drake's public image. Over the past years, the two have been locked in a battle for supremacy, but their rivalry took a different turn recently, with the two getting locked in a fierce war of words. Lamar's bomb allegations coupled with the resurfaced video have further raised suspicions about Drake and his relationships with younger women. But unlike before, this time, Drake did not remain silent. In a swift response through his music, he addressed the allegations head on. In his diss track response to Lamar titled, The Heart Part 6, with a defiant tone, he rapped, I never been with no one underage, but now I understand why this, the angle that you really mess with, if I was f***ing young girls, I promise I'd have been arrested. This lyrical rebuttal was Drake's attempt to to clear the air and reclaim his narrative amidst the growing backlash. His career, while momentarily under a cloud of suspicion, seemed to weather the storm as he continued to release music and perform to sold-out crowds. However, the conversation about his behavior with younger women, including his well-documented friendships with Billie Eilish and Millie Bobby Brown when they were under 18, remained a point of contention. Drake's ongoing beef with Kendrick Lamar has brought more of what he would prefer to leave in the past back to everyone's consciousness. While Drake has carried on like he is unfazed, his attacks on Lamar have become more personal 
pointing to the fact that some nerves may have been touched. Consequently, what started as a war of words between two rivals is fast becoming a vicious battle for survival between two enemies. And no one, absolutely no one, has any idea when or how it will end. The feud with Kendrick Lamar. Over the last few months, the internet and news media have been consumed by the tension between these former collaborators now turned enemies. Interestingly, Drake and Kendrick Lamar's rivalry stretches back over a decade, highlighting threads of competition, respect, and one-upmanship. It was in the early 2010s when both artists began their ascent to stardom, with Drake's smooth melodies and Kendrick's lyrical prowess, earning them each a throne in the temple of rap gods. They even collaborated, with Lamar featuring on Drake's Take Care and Drake returning the favor on Lamar's Good Kid Massachusetts, AD City. However, the first tremors of conflict were felt in 2013, when Kendrick Lamar's verse on Big Sean's Control sent shockwaves through the industry. Calling out several rappers, including Drake, Kendrick declared himself the king of both coasts, setting a competitive tone that Drake initially seemed to brush off, yet the undercurrent of competition lingered, overshadowed by Drake's other feuds, most notably with Meek Mill, and push a T fast forward to 2023. And the embers of rivalry were stoked into flames with the release of First Person Shooter. Featured artist J. Cole dubbed himself Drake and Lamar, the big three of hip hop, a seemingly innocent comment that would ignite a firestorm. Kendrick, on his track like that, dismissed the notion of a big three, declaring, it's just big me. His words were a direct hit to the alliance suggested by J. Cole and a clear message to Drake that he saw himself in a league of his own. The track, produced by Metro Boomin, became a battleground where Kendrick laid down the gauntlet, challenging the hierarchy of hip-hop royalty. Unsurprisingly, the ripple effect was immediate. J. Cole, initially part of the Big Three narrative, jumped into the fray with his own surprise album, Might Delete Later. The album's track, Seven Minute Drill, featured a verse that many interpreted as a jab at Kendrick, criticizing his discography and impact. However, Cole's involvement was fleeting. He soon removed the track from streaming platforms, expressing regret over his participation in the beef. With J. Cole removing himself from the beef, the year 2024 provided a stage for a confrontation between Drake and Kendrick, and much to the delight of their fans and music lovers, the duo didn't disappoint. Then the battle of lyrics. Drake responded with a one-two punch, releasing push-ups and tailor-made freestyle on April 19th. In push-ups, Drake took aim at Kendrick's stature and his ventures into pop music, while also broadening his scope to include other artists like Future and The Week. The track was a brash display of Drake's confidence, as he attempted to belittle Kendrick's contributions to the genre. But the drama didn't end there. Taylor Made Freestyle saw Drake allege that Kendrick was delaying his response due to Taylor Swift's album release, a claim that would soon be enveloped by controversy. The track featured AI-generated vocals of the late Tupac Shakur, leading to a cease and desist from Tupac's estate and the song's removal from public platforms. The next chapter of the feud came nearly two weeks later, and this time, Kendrick did not hold back in his counterattack. His track Euphoria, released on April 30th, was a savage response that accused Drake of being a pathetic man master manipulator and a habitual liar. Kendrick went as far as to suggest that Drake was not a true rap artist but a scam artist, further intensifying the feud. The narrative of the Drake and Kendrick Lamar feud took a deeply personal turn with the release of Drake's Family Matters on May 3rd. In this nearly eight-minute track, Drake made explicit claims about Kendrick's personal life, including accusations of physical abuse towards his fiance, Whitney Alford. He also questioned the paternity of Kendrick's child and insinuated infidelity and domestic issues within Kendrick's relationship. The track was a no-holds-barred assault that also targeted Kendrick's manager, Dave Free, with a line that left listeners questioning the boundaries of the feud. In the verse, Drake says, I heard that one of them little kids might be Dave Free, hinting that Dave Free could have fathered one of Kendrick's kids. Drake's assault on Kendrick Lamar's personal life forced a dark turn on their beef, and Kendrick's response was swift and merciless. Within an hour of family matters hitting the airwaves, Kendrick released Meet the Grams, a track that was arguably the most aggressive salvo in their ongoing battle. Kendrick not only addressed Drake's accusations, but also went on to make unverified claims about Drake's use of Ozempic, and alluded to rumors of Drake getting a Brazilian butt lift. The cover art for the track, featuring medication with Drake's legal name, added a visual punch to the verbal onslaught. Furthermore, Kendrick's lyrics in Meet the Grams were a brutal takedown, comparing Drake to disgraced Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein and attacking his character as a father. In the track's third verse, Kendrick insinuates that Drake has a daughter that he is hiding from the world and blatantly calls him a deadbeat father. While seemingly talking to a baby girl who has an absentee father, Kendrick says, Dear baby girl, I'm sorry that your father not active inside your world. He don't commit to much but his music. Yeah, that's for sure. He 
he's a narcissist, misogynist, living inside his songs. Try to destroy families rather than taking care of his own. He continues, but I would like to say it's not your fault that he's hiding another child. I'll tell you who your father is. Just play this song when it rains. Yes, he's a hit maker, songwriter, superstar, right? And a F-kin deadbeat that should never say more life. Kendrick Lamar's accusation about Drake hiding another child has particular significance because it is not the first time the Hotline Bling rapper would be accused of such, and it eventually turned out to be true. In 2018, rapper Pusha T accused Drake of hiding his firstborn, Adonis, whom he welcomed with former porn star Sophie Busso. It took two years after Pusha T made the claims on his track, The Story of Adido, before Drake publicly acknowledged his son via a post on social media. This time, however, Drake swiftly responded to the claims that he had a hidden daughter. The rapper recently took to his Instagram stories to shut down these rumors, albeit in a cheeky manner. While sharing a photo of himself looking somber, Drake wrote, Nah, hold on, can someone find my hidden daughter PLS and send her to me? These guys are in shambles, alongside several laughing and crying emoji. But Drake's denial of the rumors did little to discourage Kendrick from maintaining the tempo of his attacks. Like Pusha T, Kendrick has taken the role of a truth teller in the rap game and is hell bent on proving his claims against Drake, which includes painting Drake as a narcissist and misogynist. On May 4th, Kendrick's Not Like Us pushed the boundaries even further. The track featured cover art allegedly showing Drake's mansion marked like the residence of a sex offender. The track also alluded to previous allegations of grooming against Drake and took jabs at his associates, including Party Next Door and Baka Not Nice, both signed to Drake's OVO sound label. Kendrick's lyrics were unflinching, painting Drake as a certified lover boy surrounded by certified pedophiles. With Kendrick Lamar's allegations going viral on social media, Drake's The Heart Part 6, released on May 5th, was a drab response that aimed to shut down all the rumors and further cast doubts on Kendrick's integrity. Drake denied the allegations that Lamar threw at him and claimed he had deliberately fed Lamar fake information to see if he would fall for it. Drake also addressed the Epstein angle, specifically, touching on his controversial friendship with Stranger Things actor Millie Bobby Brown. While addressing the issue, Drake raps, only fucking with Whitney's, not Millie Bobby Brown's. I'd never look twice at no teenager. This will make it the second time Drake will be responding to criticism over his friendship with the actress, whom he first met when she was only 13. Despite Drake's bullish denial then and now, the rumors continue to spread like wildfire and have become even more intense amidst his feud with Lamar. One thing that has seemingly worked against Drake in the court of public opinion is his seemingly tainted past, flooded with controversial relationships with nearly every woman he has come in contact with. Drake's controversial relationships with women. Drake put hot sauce in his used condom. While some male celebrities like Nick Cannon, Mel Gibson, and Eddie Murphy don't mind having several baby mamas, Drake does everything humanly possible to avoid towing the same line. So when he isn't hiding the fact that he has a child, he is putting hot sauce inside his used condoms to kill off sperm cells. Yes, you heard that right. Drake goes to a date prepared with a bottle of hot sauce, not for the food, but for whatever sexual encounters that may come up after. This shocking revelation came about in 2022 when an Instagram model accused the rapper of putting hot sauce inside a condom after their romantic encounter. She told the Too Much Hot Tea blog that after the steamy romp session with Drake, he went into the bathroom to dispose of the condom. After he left the bathroom, she admitted taking the condom out of the trash and emptying the content into her vagina in an attempt to impregnate herself, but that was when all hell was let loose. She felt a terrible burning sensation, and her screams forced Drake to run into the bathroom, where he admitted pouring a packet of hot sauce into the condom to kill the sperm. Although this is quite an unusual way to try and prevent pregnancy, it didn't come as a surprise to his followers given the fact that Drake had previously complained about having to go to great lengths to ensure that women don't collect his sperm. On the song Wasting Time with Brent Fiaz, Drake raps, gold medalist, flush the magnums just so they not collecting my specimens, damn. After the news of the hot sauce incident broke on the internet, Drake took to Instagram and X to address the issue in his usual coy manner. While sharing two brooding pictures of himself, he wrote, you can have your 15 minutes of fame. I'll take the other 23 hours and 45 minds. Drake's thinly veiled response ignited a spectrum of reactions across the internet. Fans of the hip hop star were quick to jump to his defense, while others couldn't help but marvel at the absurdity of the situation. Memes erupted across Twitter and Instagram Instagram, with the internet's most creative minds churning out content that ranged from spicy puns to mock product advertisements, all centered around the alleged hot sauce incident. For many of his fans, his actions, though absurd, were understandable. They argued that the birth of his son, Adonis, took him by surprise, hence his extreme caution. Although there was a lot of uncertainty surrounding the existence of his son after Pusha T first broke the news in 2018, Drake provided clarity on the matter in his song March 14th from the 2018 album Scorpion. There, he confirmed 
confirmed that Adonis was conceived after only one encounter with Sophie Brousseau. She's not my lover like Billie Jean, but the kid is mine. Sandy used to tell me all it takes is one time, and all it took was one time, he rapped, referencing his mom, Sandy Graham. Although the dust has since settled on that episode, with Drake publicly acknowledging his son in a series of posts in 2020, and Brousseau relocating to Canada for effective co-parenting, the saga has constantly haunted the God's Plan rapper. More importantly, these are not the only instances Drake has become entangled in controversies involving women. To put it plainly, it is more like a recurring pattern that has overshadowed Drake's career, giving him the unhealthy labels of a misogynist, and more recently a certified pedophile, as coined by Kendrick Lamar. The discourse around Drake's alleged misogyny isn't just idle chatter. It's rooted in a series of lyrics and public statements that have, over time, painted a concerning picture. To understand the gravity of these accusations, one must examine the content of his music and the nature of his remarks. Take for instance the album Thank Me Later, where Drake's portrayal of women often swung between reverence and disdain. In tracks like Fancy, he celebrates a woman's independence, yet in the same breath, he reduces her to her physical attributes. This duality is a recurring theme in his discography, where women are either placed on pedestals or dismissed with a casual misogyny that's hard to ignore. Fast forward to 2016, and we encounter the album Views, where the song Hotline Bling sparked a cultural firestorm. The track's catchy hook belied its problematic message, where Drake laments an ex-girlfriend's newfound autonomy, seemingly preferring her when she was dependent on him. This possessiveness, cloaked in nostalgia, was a red flag for many listeners who heard not a love song, but an anthem of control. More recently, in the song 2022 track Circo Loco, Drake makes a joke about Megan Thee Stallion's traumatic experience with Tori Lanez, rapping this BH lie about getting shot but she's still a stallion, she don't even get the joke, but she's still smiling. Drake went on to show a lack of remorse by ignoring Megan when she justifiably reacted angrily to his mention of her via her ex-profile. Public statements have also contributed to the narrative. Drake's 2011 comment about wanting to make Serena Williams sweat objectifies the tennis icon, reducing her to a sexual conquest rather than respecting her as an individual. Such remarks, whether made in jest or earnest, contribute to a culture that views women through a lens of male desire and entitlement. But lyrics and spoken words are only part of the story. Drake's behavior outside the recording studio has also been controversial. Drake's 2010 concert in Denver, Colorado, where he kissed a young fan on stage, stands out as the most controversial moment in his career. Though the age of consent in Colorado may have legally absolved him, the power dynamics at play in his subsequent reaction left many uneasy. Despite the public condemnation of his action, the pattern continued, with Drake's name often linked to younger women, raising questions about his intentions. In 2013, he performed at Kylie Jenner's 16th birthday, fueling rumors of a relationship despite their age difference. By 2016, he was linked to Bella Harris, who was just 16 at the time they met. And in 2017, the song Jaded from the album Scorpion was rumored to be about English singer Georgia Smith, who was 19 while he was 30. Perhaps most unsettling are Drake's friendships with teenage stars like Millie Bobby Brown and Billie Eilish. Both relationships were publicly discussed, with Brown revealing text conversations about boys and Eilish defending Drake as the nicest dude. While both parties have downplayed the interactions, the optics are troubling, given the age gaps and Drake's status. These instances paint a picture of a man who, intentionally or not, perpetuates a culture that often objectifies and disempowers women. His lyrics frequently reduce women to conquests or trophies, and his personal associations suggest a pattern of seeking out the company of much younger women, which at best is questionable given the power imbalances. The cumulative effect of these lyrics and behaviors is a narrative that aligns with misogynistic attitudes. It's a pattern that suggests a view of women as objects for male pleasure, as competitors to be conquered, or as possessions to be controlled. This narrative is not unique to Drake. It's a pervasive issue in the music industry and society at large. However, as a figure with immense influence, Drake's words carry weight and have the power to shape cultural perceptions and norms. Despite the strides made in the 21st century regarding misogyny, Drake's ongoing feud with Kendrick Lamar has once again brought to the fore Drake's complex relationship with women, both in his lyrics and personal life, sparking a significant debate. While some defend him as a product of his environment or a friendly figure in the lives of these young stars, Stars, others see a pattern of behavior that cannot be overlooked. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the card showing on the screen.